Propofol is a lipophilic anesthetic. That means it's fat-soluble and can cross the blood-brain barrier. As a result, it causes global CNS depression, and in the emergency department, it is often used for procedural sedation and the induction during rapid sequence intubation. Propofol causes global CNS depression through agonism of GABA-A receptors. It works by potentiating the effects of the neuroinhibitory GABA transmitter by slowing the closing time of the GABA receptor. By slowing the closing time of this receptor, you will get a longer flux of chloride across this channel, which leads to decreased neuronal activity and CNS depression. There is also the suggested mechanism of reduced glutamatergic activity through the blockade of the NMDA receptor, which could also lead to CNS depression. Because of its CNS effects, this also makes propofol a desirable choice for the use in patients with status epilepticus, since it will suppress neuronal activity. The typical starting dose of propofol for emergent induction is 1.5 to 2.5 mg per kilogram as an IV bolus. So for a 70 kg male, the dose would be about 105 to 175 mg as an IV bolus. Propofol may also be used for post-intubation sedation as well, with a starting dose of 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. You can titrate by 5 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute every 5 minutes, with usual maintenance rates between 5 to 50 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Pharmacologically, propofol is a desirable drug due to its quick onset of action and short duration of action. The average onset of action is 30 seconds, with a typical duration being 3 to 10 minutes. With prolonged use, such as post-intubation sedation in the ICU, the duration may last longer after propofol is discontinued. This is because propofol has a large volume of distribution, and after prolonged infusion, it starts to accumulate into tissues and then redistributes into plasma when it's discontinued. The main contraindication to propofol is hypersensitivity to the drug, or any of its components of its formulation, such as eggs or soy. Other adverse effects are hypotension and apnea. So in the emergent setting, the use of propofol in a hypotensive patient should be reconsidered, or you may want to choose another agent for induction. With prolonged use, such as for post-intubation sedation, you may develop propofol infusion syndrome, also known as PRIS. The mechanism for PRIS is not completely understood, but it's a rare condition that could lead to rhabdomyolysis, liver failure, kidney failure, elevated triglycerides, and cardiac failure. PRIS is more commonly seen in children than adults, and occurs with prolonged exposure, making propofol safe in the acute setting for intubation. Some people may even experience a burning sensation at the injection site. Thank you.